Hi, Lee Thurburn again, and now we're on book eight, which is the subject of pricing. Pricing is one of those things that you're going to have a lot of opportunity to practice. Uh, pricing is an important decision and can have a critical impact on your success. Uh, most new entrepreneurs have a tendency to underprice their product or service. And that's something you want to be very careful to try to avoid doing because it boxes you into a corner and it becomes kind of difficult for you to raise your price. It would be better if you were going to make a mistake of either under or overpricing to overprice slightly because you can always give discounts to people and uh, make a, give them an incentive to go ahead and make the purchase now sooner rather than later. Pricing is very involved with perception um, and value. Value is a unique and very subjective um, comp uh, computation that each individual goes through. When you're exchanging money for a product or a service, there's two sets of perceptions going on. First, the seller. The seller is saying to himself or herself, that the product or service they're getting rid of, that they're letting go of, that they're providing, is actually worth less than the amount of money they're receiving. So when a seller agrees to sell something, they're intrinsically saying that they're making a profit, they're willing to let go of it at that price, that the value to them is at or below, typically below, the price the consumer is willing to pay because they wouldn't let go of something without making a profit unless, of course, it's a clearance type of situation, which does happen. The consumer, the purchaser on the other side, is effectively saying during the um, price um, negotiation that they actually believe the value is greater because, think about it, if you're buying something and you're pay paying, say, a hundred bucks, you would not give your hundred dollars unless you felt like you were getting a good deal. You're basically saying that at this price, that thing is worth at least a hundred dollars to you because you're willing to give up a hundred dollars. The concept of at least implies that it's actually worth more. So your perception of the value is that it's at least worth a hundred dollars. The seller's perception of the value is that it probably is worth less to the seller. So the, the price point that the two actually agree upon is an interesting sort of dynamic that occurs and it's all because of the subjective value calculation that people go through. And basically that value calculation is that the benefit divided by the cost is the value. So effectively people are saying that I'm going to get so much benefit that it's worth it to me to give up this price this or Conversely, I'm going to get so much value out of the money that it's worth it to let me to let go of this thing. So there's a calculation that's going on um, about this, the whole concept of value that's a very, very interesting uh, dynamic. The concept of fair market value is one that we should talk a little bit about because really what we're saying in, um, in a value conversation is that at the point in time that a buyer and seller agree to exchange money for services or products that based upon other options that are alternatives that are available in the marketplace and based upon their personal knowledge of those options in the marketplace that presuming there's no undue outside influence no no duress no force no no pressure being placed upon either the buyer or the seller that these two individuals are coming together and agreeing that at this moment in time the true value of this product or service is this fair market value. Fair market value is very easily explained um, by thinking about either real estate or cars. Real estate has the multiple listing service, the database of sold properties that realtors uh, update and maintain and it helps people understand what a similar property is sold for recently in the immediately surrounding area. So both the buyer and the seller are aware of this. Every piece of real estate is unique. So even though there's a good database of comparable information, the actual price that is paid is partly a function of that data, but also a function of the consumer's perception of the value that they're receiving for that exchange.